uh, we were talking about when you host an API. Like in the blueprint, where the uh, on the in the connect phase you host the API, and you have a data producer. So generally, when you want to do stream processing, you can you can do two things. You have two options. Either you could say, okay, uh, well you're hosting the API. Behind the API is always a piece of code that that uh, yeah consumes the data or, or processes the data. And it doesn't matter where you are uh, on um, on Azure. It's a function behind. Um, uh, I always forget the Azure names, but in, on uh, on AWS, it's behind API gateways, a Lambda function. So it's always the same. If you write fast API, basically you're hosting the APIs, but uh, behind you have your Python code, for instance. So what you have is on the left, you have a producer that is sending you a post request with a JSON in it. And um, then you are processing this with your API. You can do data validation here already, where you say, okay, let's look at the data. Let's see if everything's there, if uh, if the data types fit, um, if we're missing if we're missing values. And then you could return a return code immediately to the client, where you say malformed or, or whatever, right? That it's not okay. That's important. That would be the first part. Now. You have in the, now this from this point on you have two options. This uh, the producer sends you something. Now he's waiting for the actual result, and you have the two options are either you go here from your code directly towards the database with this uh, dashed line here, or you say okay, I'm going from here into a message queue and then into some kind of a processing, and then into the database. It both makes sense, but for different reasons. Um, because the the upper part makes sense where uh, you get this or you use this very often if you need to check something or if you need to get a response to the to the sender immediately. Like um, you're sending, you're managing credit card transactions, and you need to um, check if or you're, you're, you're um, with the debit card, you have the bank account in the background and you have a transaction, you want to check if there's actual uh, funds on the on the account. So you you would need to do some something a bit like that where you where you immediately you're uh, in you're accessing the relational database once the request comes in. So you can then say to the to the producer or to the client, okay, listen, there are no funds. The problem with this is when you're not not necessarily when you're querying data a lot, or when you yeah, when you use this for querying, but for when you push data in a lot. It becomes a problem because when you think about think about an e-commerce store or Amazon in general, when you think about the Amazon store, you have your you have your cycles throughout the day, uh, during lunchtime, during the, the morning breaks, people are going to or in the evening when people are finished with their work, they're going to buy a lot of stuff. So you're going to have a lot of transaction coming in and you have then you have these peaks. And these peaks, the problem is if your database and it doesn't matter if relational or no SQL, it's, it's just an example here. If your database is too slow here, this would actually then um, slow down your API or slow down the communication with the client. Meaning you tr the, the API here is, uh, there's coming something in, there's a JSON coming in, the API is trying to write it to the database. The database has so much to do that it actually cannot process it immediately and the API would wait. And it would wait. And after, I don't know, 30 seconds, it would send a timeout to the producer. I couldn't process it. That's not something you don't want. And especially with something like relational databases, it's it's hard to actually um, relieve this, this problem with uh, this is called back pressure because you're literally putting pressure on the back end with your with your APIs or with a, with a producer here. 
it's hard to to scale because relational databases are hard to scale but it can also be a problem with NoSQL databases the second option here is that you're using a message queue in behind message queue and a type of processing could be um could be kafka and spark if you're talking about the NoSQL uh way and uh, not NoSQL, the open source way um but the the problem with this uh once you write this to the message queue it's out of the hand uh, or what happens is out of the hand of the api so it basically breaks the the http request in a way of okay the api is going to write into the message queue and then it only can say to the producer okay i that's it i wrote it it's it's in processing i i accepted it it's a bit difficult sometimes but for when you think about um the where the uh, or use cases where the producer uh, doesn't really need to get a feedback if everything has been processed correctly or you even can handle uh if something gets dropped like you have a weather station you have weather stations here that are sending weather data the weather station doesn't really need to know if the data has been put into the database it's just okay got it done or if you're uh, if yeah if, so if, if it's not really crucial to to give an immediate feedback you can always use this this type of message queue and processing in behind but keep in mind whenever you do that you you the api or the return result to the uh, to the producer doesn't really know what's happening because it needs to happen here at this at this point